Hey, it's Leon and welcome to Scotland. We're in Loch Fyne to find out how Loch Fyne oysters are farmed and why they're so special. I'm also heading down to the local oyster bar to try and decide what the best way of serving them is. Down the hatch we go. Loch Fyne farms Pacific oysters, which can be found at various locations on the Scottish coast. Pacific oysters constitute of 80% of the global oyster trade and were introduced to the UK in 1964 to replace low stocks of the British native oysters. The native variety can be more expensive and rare, but also riskier to consume. But if these oysters are harvested all around the world, including France, Australia and New Zealand, what makes Scottish ones so special? Local landowner Johnny Noble and marine biologist Andy Lane started the Loch Fine Oyster Farm in 1978. Since then, they've grown it into a global business. They export internationally to Barbados, South Africa and Hong Kong, as well as stocking in prestigious London retailers. Their oysters were even served at Formula One and the Champions League finals. The Scottish locks have cool weather in the spring for the start of harvest season in April. And this lock in particular is of class A purity at least six months of the year. Absolutely pristine conditions. It's what you're looking for. As you can see, there's no industry. There's maybe a couple of houses. So they're feeding on the best possible feed that you could want. The water that you're growing the oysters in, again, I can't stress enough at how good it is. In heavily populated areas, you run the risk of norovirus as well as other things in the water. And safety here is paramount. Loch Fine monitors the water here constantly for toxins, as do the local authorities. To eliminate viruses, each oyster undergoes a series of checks, starting the moment it arrives from the hatchery. The oysters are grown for up to three years in specialised baskets, which allow for movement and controlled exposure to the tide. These are called SEPA baskets. When the tide comes in, that actually moves these baskets. That'll gently just knock off any excess growth that we've got in the oysters and give a better shape to the oyster and a better meat content to the oyster. And these trestles at the low tide mark, twice a day, no matter what the weather is, they are out of water and have got to keep themselves shut. That gives them a stronger muscle. And this process also affects the experience of enjoying an oyster. By regulating their size to about 120 grams for the largest and 65 to 75 grams for the smallest, they can ensure the correct oysters go for cooking and the others are more appropriate for an enjoyable mouthful. The water also affects the flavour of the oyster. By growing the oyster in a lock with lower salt levels, you get a more pleasant salinity. Also, as they're grown in a lock and not open coastal waters, there's little disturbance on the seabed, which would otherwise make the oysters gritty. Any oysters imported from local producers need to de-stress after their journey. They're counted into bags of 100 to 150 from partner growers and placed in stillages by the waterside, before being taken into the grading shed, then the depuration shed. Tanks containing water from the lock have to be kept between 8 and 18 degrees Celsius to avoid the produce closing up. This is the depuration process, where the oysters are purified under UV light for a minimum of 42 hours to kill off any nasty bacteria. The tanks are then drained and the oysters are packaged. Loch Fine prides itself on its produce's long shelf life. But how does the company ensure that each oyster is fresh? So what we would do is when we're packing the oysters, we'd pick up two oysters and we would tap them together. Two oysters getting tapped together should sound like two stones getting tapped together. And what that means is you've got a good healthy oyster that is going to last. Now if an oyster's gaping like that, that means it's dead. Okay, it's not like mussels. With mussels you can give them a little tap and the uh, mussel will shut back over again absolutely fine. If oysters gape, then that's them. The nearby Loch Fine Oyster Bar sells them for £2 or $2.44 each. Just so good at our oysters. <laughs> our, our oysters are, I mean, I get them every day. Uh, five days a week, my oysters come in, sometimes six days a week. They're just from over there, across a the loch, and you can tell how fresh they are. But do they taste as good as they look? I'm going to go for it without anything on it first, because I just really want to get a taste of what the oyster actually tastes like. It's actually really subtle. 
I think oysters I've had in the past have been quite slimy. This one definitely wasn't. They slide down the hatch, but you can chew them. There's a, definitely a texture to them. The oysters here are served with this onion vinegar, so I'm gonna squeeze a bit of lemon and then have the onion vinegar one. I like anything that's pickled, so adding the vinegar element to the really salty oyster is, is actually really good. Um, I have been brought this Tabasco. I'm not gonna put any on here because I feel like these oysters don't need to be overpowered by the flavor of the Tabasco sauce. So far, the fresh oyster with lemon is my favorite, but what are the cooked ones like? We have one that has anchovy, smoked cheddar, and some chili sauce. And then this is just garlic, cheese, breadcrumbs. Oh, this is so early in the morning to be eating oysters. <laughs> I absolutely love anchovies. I've never had one on an oyster, so it works. The chili sauce is like a nice sweetness to it that probably you do need when you've got something that salty. Garlic, butter and breadcrumbs. It's like a little mini fish pie. That's exactly what it was like, a mini little fish pie. <laughs> it was really nice. For me, the king, if you're gonna eat oysters, eat them, eat them fresh, eat them alive. Loch Fine exports nearly 35,000 oysters every week, just over 1.8 million a year. Production here might be at a comparatively smaller scale, but the business has won multiple awards for its taste and quality, including the Queen's Award for Excellence International Trade. We have a group called the ASSG, which is the Association of Scottish Shellfish Growers, who meet every year, and uh, we try and develop the industry every year. It's not a big industry at the moment, but the good thing about the industry is it's, it's quality motivated. and. Just like ourselves here, it depends on local communities.